okay recording also started so like your general idea so what's like the flat file just like the hmm okay okay so okay let me go through that flat file is also a kind of a text file or like normal file which will be having a specific definition so it's not like our regular text message where you will write like whatever we want to do so the flat file will be contain the information in a structured way and it will be having a specific meaning so uh, there will be like many types of the flat files you have like delimited separated and you have specific length based for example if you want to write a uh, student data or employee data how do you start like if we start uh, something and something so there is no meaning here okay and then i will say like this but this normal text file without any meaning but if i write, write something like this um, okay and then sorry if my age is wrong so when you see this like two records so you know like uh, there will be some specific meaning so if you see so the first place i have one string and next place so after comma i have one number and then martali bangalore but like the people who knows bangalore then they will say like so looks like this is a name of someone and this is some number okay this munekola is a area and bangalore is a city so so i try to write address of the person okay so uh, say for example say he is my employee so when i write this like venkat vivek so we don't know like which record type it is so whether it is a student or whether it's a normal person or like employee of a some employee employer i don't know so i have to write some identification okay the same way if i write somewhere else then it will be so when i write like only the so without this emp so what do you know like this is some address of the person but i don't know which person he is now i know he is an employee and when i say here so he is a student so the flat file also will be having so this is a, the first one the record identifier how do you identify the whole record okay so that based on the starting element and then so there will be a specific meaning for this so there is a name of student and age of student okay street of student city of student the same way here it is a name of an employee age of an employee or like employee number you can say uh, that depends on like you can make it as age or you can make it as a number also okay so name of an employee number of an employee age of an employee street of an employee and then uh city of an employee here also i can make it as a student number so this number is 1 this number is 2 so if you see these two records the information which i am giving is a similar okay but the definition is changing based on the record type so when i mention the student so these details are related to student when i mention emp these details are related to employee so these are the the person details the person may be an employee or may be a student so now we'll go to the flat file concept so the flat file you can define like in different ways so instead of writing this i can put like instead of commas i can put a specific 
each field will be having the some length. So in the flat file terminology, you'll, uh, you will see this the record is a big one and then field. Next one, subfield. Okay, the file will be on top of it, all of this. So the entire records, what you see is file, all the records in a flat file. Okay, so from the flat file, you'll be having a record. So each line is a record. So this flat file concept was there when we don't have the RDBMS. So we have Oracle, MS, SQL, SQL Server, everything is like a databases now, right? So when we don't have the database to store the data, so that time, so this was very useful. So storing an information into a flat file and retrieving the information from the flat files. Now also we'll be using it. So just to make the uh, compatibility, for example, as I said, like earlier also when we we're discussing about web services, so say we need a common platform. So you can read this flat file from the Java, okay, and .NET also. So if you have some data in the .NET and you want to share with the Java guy, okay, you will use this flat file concept and then we'll do that. Okay, so uh, the similar, so, so flat file, if you see the file, will be having all the flat file data. Flat file is nothing but a file, which will be having meaningful. For example, record. So each line is a record. So this is a employee one and employee two. So in a database concept, we call it as a record. So you'll insert all the employee data. If you want to find any employee related information, it will be one row. So that row will row is nothing but a record. Okay, field. Field is nothing but like each and everyone. So this is a name, which is a field. Number, field. Age is a field. Okay, this one is also a field. And then city also a field. And then subfield. For example, I don't want to maintain a street and city. I want to combine these two as a address. We'll call it, call it as a subfield used for the complex field. Okay, field or complex field. A field is a small component. A complex field is a combination of the subfields. So there will be, for example, if you see, whenever you see the comma, it's a new field. Okay, so here there is no comma, it's a separate separator, which is for the subfield. So this entire thing is a single entity. It is a address. Address again will be having the street and city and if you want you can add the zip code also okay so now this entire thing is a complex field of the type address. Again, address will be having the street and then city pin code. So a flat file contains records, fields are complex fields and then subfield for the complex fields. Okay, there will be different types of flat files we have. So we can see it in the, like when we're doing the exercises, I will show you what are the types of flat files. Even I can specify here. So most of the things like will be delimited. This is nothing but a, so this comma is nothing but a delimiter. How do you identify a each field? So that's a delimited comma or you can use uh, pipeline. Okay, or you can use the this symbol also. Okay, so any symbol you can use, we call it as a delimiter. So you will identify each record by using the delimiter. So most of them like most of us will be using the comma only. Delimiter and then fixed length. 
okay fixed length i don't have the delimiter for each field i will maintain 10 sorry 5 say so 10 for example emp is 3 right 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 3 plus 3 6 7 7 8 9 10 so i already have 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 2 i have 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so each field will be having the fixed length i know the first 10 characters will be record identifier and the next 10 characters will be the name the next 10 characters will be the number so here what disadvantage is there for example i am making now the length will be 10 what happens my data is more than 10 characters so what it does is for example say uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 a Bangalore city I want to write okay so what happens now 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so till here it will consider it as a city okay and from and from here onwards okay from I till it uh, reaches 10 characters it will treat it as a zip number which is a wrong because the issue with the fixed length is when we have the more than 10 characters when we have the ten, more than 10 characters then it will go it will go to the next record Okay, did you understand this? Any questions here? Are you good to go? Okay, so in the web methods, whenever we're working with the flat file, we'll be having the two concepts. One will call it as a FF schema, which is a flat file schema. Oh, it's not typing. Flat file schema. So on top of the schema, we'll be having the dictionary. Okay, so by the meaning itself, you, know, you see the dictionary. Dictionary is the, like the placeholder for all your schemas. Okay, so when you define any schema in the dictionary, you can reuse it in the multiple places. But if you create direct schema, okay, it's not reusable. So we'll see how to create a schema, how to create a dictionary, and what is the purpose of it? Purpose of both of them. Okay. Can I proceed? Remaining also, you can ping me. So, FF stands for flat file, you just give a short name. Okay, so when you open new, okay, you will see a flat file dictionary flat file schema so first we'll create a flat file dictionary and then we'll create a flat file schema and i will let you know what's the difference between these two so uh, it's not ff directory it's ff dictionary i did not find any ff directory Maybe they are uh, looking for like where you store your flat files. Maybe that's the directory, flat file directory. But uh, I never hear this word FF directory, flat file directory. So there is a flat file dictionary and flat file di 
Flatwell dictionary and Flatwell schema. So this Flatwell directory may be the place where you will be getting the flat files at the place where you are storing your flat files. Hope I answered your question. So I'm proceeding with the next. Any question? Then just seeing it here. Okay, so new and you see the flat file dictionary and flat file schema. I'm creating a flat file dictionary first. So just example what we have seen now is the hmm. in the example we see the employee or student we see employee okay you see when you're creating a dictionary you'll say record definition so record is nothing but like for example if i say name name will be single field address will be composite field but name number i mean like uh, employee number employee age address if you combine all of them it will make a record so first we will define record as emp okay from field definition you can create first field is make it as a identify record identifier so just make it like this i will tell you what is important for this okay record identifier name id name id and Age, then say salary, and then so once you complete the salary. Then what was missing? Okay, so not here. You go to composite field. Okay, so here I define and I will use it in the composite. Street. City. And then postal code. Or zip code. Okay, so I have the composite field called the address. So this, uh, what you want to define in the field, what you want to define in the composite field and what record you want to store, you have to think first and then make it. Okay, so if you see, we are storing the employee data that I created, I need a record type of employee and I know what the fields I want to store. And my composite definition is address. Composite field again will be having its subfields, right? So you have to define the subfields again. So how do you define? Just right click and new. See, so the, you will see two options here. One is field definition and then field reference. So field definition, if you want to write your own and you don't want to use any existing fields. So if you define here, you won't be able to reuse it anywhere. But if you define in the normal fields types, you can use it anywhere by using the field reference. So we already have the address related fields here. I can use them. So which field reference we want from this dictionary? You have to, whenever you are uh, mentioning the reference, that has to go to dictionary because the dictionary is the placeholder for all your schema details. Okay. 
so without dictionary you won't be able to refer anything so all your references will go to the dictionary okay so they won't show it now because we could not say this field reference next dictionary next so these are the fields available okay i need the street number first okay and you see the fixed position and nth field whenever we are using this type comma separated some delimiter go with the nth field whenever you are using this type fixed length you have to give the starting position and the ending position nth field you will see say like first position or second position will be fine but whenever you have the fixed position you have to say what is the starting position and what is the ending position since we are making it as a comma separated delimited file then i'm making it as a field so street will come in the first place of the address first position right so you have to make it as a zero okay you can say whether it's mandatory or not mandatory okay And one more thing, I can directly also define here the name. If you like this, okay. What's the advantage if you do the reference? Whenever there is a change here, the change will automatically apply here, and you have the reusability option. So I can use it in the address or I can use it in somewhere also. But I use, but if I create this here within the address, I won't be able to refer any other composite. For example, if I create one more composite, say test. If I want to reuse this test in the this test, I won't be able to use it because this is not a field type. This field is inside a composite definition, which I won't be able to use it. But if I declare it here, then I should have used it. For example, say new. If I go to reference, I should have given some other name. Okay. Cancel. I'll rename this. I want to use the city one in the test. Go to field reference from this dictionary. See, I won't be able to see any city one because that city one I defined inside another composite field. It's not inside the field list. So there is no reusability. So if you want reusability of the city one, so that has to be defined here, not here. City name and street. City and postal code. You can select more than one also. Okay, so the city position is and the field. Where is the position? First place. So zero already done. This is the second position. Finish. Okay. Saving it. Delete this. 
now i will start building the employee so employee will be having this is a record type right so record will be having either composite definition if you are declaring the new one and you have any existing reference you can use it and if you want to create the field definition we'll do that so first we'll create the field definition so sorry field references next from this dictionary yes so what are the fields i want first i need a name id okay name id then age say salary also that's it and record id sorry okay next see the first place has to go as a record identifier because you will identify that particular record by using that word i have shown you here this is the record identifier emp so if you are writing a student data then you will write that record as a student so how we were web methods knows when it completes the first record and it's going to the next record whenever it sees that particular word okay so the record identifier means it is starting up the record we are starting a new record okay it's like identifier okay so first my position is zero you have to define on your own uh, about the identifier which identifier you want to use so that identifier should match with the this definition so whatever the record definition you will create right the same word has to go there zero will be record identifier and then name will be the first one and then id will be the second one and then age will be the third one salary will be the fourth one correct so i'll make it as a id and name are mandatory finish and then i need one more composite field address okay question is which question 0 1 2 3 4 5 Fifth position, I need the address. Fifth means actual sixth. So now you have created a dictionary for the employee record. Employee schema. So you have you said like how your employee data should be. So first, so if you see name, you see here whether it's a mandatory or not, extractor. from which field it has to extract one what means second position position starts from zero okay your name will come in the second position and validator so this validator if you want to do any checkups okay so for example uh, there will be one number type and customer should not enter any string then you can specify which validator you want to use and then format service for example number has entered as 1 2 3 i want to make it as a 1 2 okay or if you want to do any formatting then you can write one service in the integration server and you can put it here and alternative name for this name you want to write any alternative name you can write description is nothing but your uh, comment so what you want to write for this particular field okay you can write the description for that and data type So which data type it is you can define it so the mandate uh, only important is this three okay whether it's mandate or not in from which field you will extract it okay now i saved it so you have the dictionary so you will create a schema either from the dictionary or you can directly create a schema so this dictionary is nothing but just to store the schema related information nothing else 
you won't be able to do anything this is just a placeholder to store your field information for the reusability purpose if you have any information in the dictionary you can use the same fields in the different different schemas if you directly create a field definitions in the schema okay so that fields will be applicable only for that particular schema you won't be able to refer in the other schemas so reusability won't be there if you don't want reusability go with directly creating a schema if you want reusability create in the dictionary and refer it in the schema so dictionary is an optional it's not a mandatory you can directly create in the schema also okay now we'll create a schema so we'll create a schema and we'll refer it from the dictionary so because we need the flat file schema to work with the web method without a flat file schema you won't be able to write but without a dictionary you can write the flat file by directly creating the schema okay so i'm writing emp see so when i creating a schema okay there will be flat file definition flat file structure so you have to define how your flat file should be okay first you will say which type of uh, schema you are creating you are creating a delimiter or fixed length or variable length or any document type so delimited means comma comma separated fixed length means each column will be having a specific field variable means like first one will come as like 5 second will as 5 for example our id id will be having always not more than 10 or like that but name will vary so id should be only 10 but name has to go as 50 but if i want to write all everything as a 50 50 50 i don't use 50 character for id but i'm wasting the space okay so to overcome that problem from the fixed length we'll go to the variable length and if you have any constraint on the storage then you'll go for the fixed length because it will be a specific field so it won't occupy most more space but delimited is the correct option because after completing the name you will write a comma so it will be completed so go with the delimited always i recommend delimited instead of the others ed document type is edi so we'll cover it in the administration part not now okay ed schemas and all okay so this record so since i make it as a delimiter it's asking how do you identify the record so i'm saying i will identify the record with the new line okay so whenever i get the new line my record was completed i'm going to the next record and then field or component field so each field i will identify the comma okay sub field i will identify with this colon and then code and release character for example I am writing a name Venkat, comma Malli. So this is his name. Venkat, comma Malli is actual his name. But my parser, web methods, flat file parser, whenever it sees comma, it will read it as a one more field. So I I want to tell my parser not to treat this as a delimiter. It's a part of the field. Then I can say i can use one escape escape me escape means so don't consider this as a delimiter okay consider it as a normal string so that escape sequence you have to save quoted release character only for the quotes okay quoted release for example like i want to write like this and this all everything has to treat it as a one string not the separate separate then so this quote Whenever it finds a port, it will replace with the symbol. So that it will treat it as a this code as a normal string, not the separate identifier. So I'll say this symbol and for the release character also the symbol. So this coded release character for only quotes, but this symbol for all these fields. Okay, so so we'll say nth field record identifier 
are we clear here so this will be important question they will ask how do you uh, define a schema first so the first question what they will ask uh, so is a dictionary what is the purpose of dictionary can we create a schema without a dictionary the purpose of dictionary is to reuse the fields and composite fields and records in the multiple schemas only for the reusability purpose you will go for the dictionary so you can create a schema without a dictionary also so dictionary is an optional to create a profile we don't require the dictionary always and then next they will ask uh, what do you see here that record parser what is the record parser and how what are the types of parsers we have and then what is like when you say delimited so you, so your project is say you worked on the delimited flat file then you'll ask how do you identify record how do you identify a field or subfield okay what is the purpose of the code release character and then release character come to flat file structure so i want to create a new record first we'll go for the reference only try to create again if i select tmp it will be fine for me okay so the definitions will come automatically from the dictionary okay let me check one more time to correct the zero one two three four five okay so we have the schema now so the first step okay from here your coding will start the first step when you create a schema we have to create a document type for it because in web methods we will work with only document types okay from the schema you have to create a document so you see ff we don't have any documents but whenever i click on this symbol okay create a document it will create a document next to the schema appended with dt document type your schema name appended with dt dt means document type and you can see your structure and you want to enter so by default it will come as a one because your schema is referring to only one employee and you want to enter multiple make it as unlimited because i don't want to store one employee data i want to store more employee data so from one you can make it as a unlimited so that means you can do more than one employee data so that max repeat is so how many records you want to maintain for that emp i want to maintain unlimited so if i do 10 it has to give me 10 if i do 100 it has to give me 100 and you can edit this also for example i don't want to go more than 100 then i can give it so unlimited is the best option so that it can accept any number so we have the schema and we have the document so the flat file when you are reading okay so when you are taking from some other place you will be having this string like this so you will take the flat file you will convert to document and from the document you will start processing it by using the flow steps okay so this is when you are working as a consumer of the flat file you are accessing the flat file or you are consuming the flat file whenever you are consuming the flat file so the flat file you will receive it once you receive the flat file okay you will take the string of the flat file from string you will convert to a document from the document you will process the document by using the flow steps okay so to so for example this is the consumption part right for the consumption so we are receiving a flat file string from flat file string to document there are built-in services available for the flat file there is a package called the wm flat file okay so in the wm flat file if you go to pub flat file so there are two 
convert to values and convert to string so convert to values okay so you are reading the string and converting it a document convert to string you are already existing document and you want to give the plot file to someone else then that time you will the existing document you will convert to string okay so i will create a new service and we'll check this okay so i have the permission to write it so I'm checking whether I have the permission to create a new file or not. Because I want to generate a plot file. Okay, so whenever you want to access uh, anything from a uh, system, okay, so you have to give the access configuration from integration server. There will be one file called the file access control in our integration server. So in that one, you have to define to which are the locations you can put. Okay, so this file access control, I'm copying it. So that will be here. Config. the name of this file access file access you have anything here Okay, so that's in the Dublin public package. Let's go to integration server. Dublin public. Okay, stop this. okay allowed write path so what are the files you can allow it to write it so i'm saying here
Wait. Maybe a little longer. Mm -mm. Okay, this I will check and update you. Okay, Sati is wrong here. We'll just create a string. So the writing into file I will show you when we are working with the services. So we have a document and from the document you have to convert a string so our document will be okay so one more so whenever there is a change in the schema you have to delete this file delete delete this document and you have to recreate it again because we have changed it from uh, one to unlimited right so we would not create this document we have to recreate it if we don't delete it it won't allow you to recreate see now change to multiple so you are converting a document to a string. You are giving the flat file to someone else. So that time, so your input will be your document type. Okay, so EMP data. We have EMP data and EMP data, you have multiple employees. And then FF string is the output. You will receive the flat file. String. So go here. In order to convert from document to string, we'll use convert to string service. So for the convert to convert to string, okay. So you need FF data, FF values, which will be your input and then schema. By using which schema you want to convert the sorry create the flat file by using this schema. Copy and then paste it here. And then this delimiter is automatically so it will take in from the schema. No need to do anything else. Go to service again. So you will be receiving the output in the form of bytes and the string. So we will take the string, so the string to FF string. 
ओके सेंड मैं बंद कर दूँ ओके तो क्रिएट फर्स्ट एम्प्लाई it would be good we have checked into proper format 